Hey reviewers and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys have been well. I'm so pleased to be back at Chandler's BMW over in Port Slade where today we are taking out this absolute beauty. The 2021 BMW 1250 GSA. It's the 40th edition so it's very special this bike. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it for a ride, stop somewhere, give you a walk and talk of the bike and then take it out for a proper ride, go through all the features and functions in practice. Let's get on it. Right, so she got keyless ride on this bike, so pop it down. That animation, beautiful. Yeah, I love it. Okay. <laughs> How about that for a start-up noise? Oh, this is good. Just getting on it straight away, actually. I thought it would be quite heavy, but it's not. It's quite light. We'll see how that feels when it's going, but yeah, so far, really nice. So let's go for a ride, and then I'll do a stop, walk around, we'll go through all the bits on the bike so you can see it properly. Then we'll go for a proper ride. Let's get on it. <laughs> what another gorgeous day guys what another gorgeous day been so lucky with the weather because on my way over here it was tipping it down absolutely infinite morning so yeah super super lucky Adjustable screen here guys, it's pretty useful. I'm just going to put that into its higher position because it helps with our audio. But yeah, you just twist this here and there you go. Higher or lower? That engine, oh. Beautiful sound to it. It's just a lovely like burbly induction roar. Now we've got this in the road mode at the moment, um, but this bike for 2021 has seven different riding modes. Seven! <laughs> and you can get four of them that you can switch at any one time from this mode button here. We're going to stop and I'll show you a bit of that properly, so yeah, don't worry, we won't go through everything now. But you can just filter through the four that you've got. So we've got road, dynamic, enduro and rain set up on this one. But if you wanted to, you might want to have... Uh, Dynamic Pro on there instead. Um, there's even an eco mode now as well, much like you get an eco mode on your car. Um, so yeah, very cool. We'll keep it in road for now. And then when we get off, we'll go through some of the modes and we can try them out and see how it feels in practice. Now we do get the quick shifter on this one because this is the TE variant. So we've got pretty much all of the toys on this one. But it's the 40th edition pack on top of what is the TE version as well. So yeah, absolutely loaded. Give or take, this spec's about 20 grand. But there's always a deal to be had. Always a deal. <laughs> the riding position though. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. That seat is lovely, just on initial impressions. Really nice. And it's lovely and upright and you know the bars are lovely and wide it just feels so easy you know easy fantastic visibility lovely big screen i mean for a big fellow like myself this is spot on honestly look at that isn't that gorgeous now we might still get a bit of a a challenge from the weather today there's no promises it's going to be sunny and to be fair i kind of want it to go a bit changeable to be fair different road types but what we're going to do is we're going to go for a little bit of a little bit of ride here then i'm going to stop wow photo shooting the field back there <laughs> but yeah what we're going to do is we're going to go for a little bit of a ride then I'm going to stop, we'll do a walk and talk of the bike and then head on through the dike here and we're going to go the long way around uh, come out near Shoreham Airport type way then back on the dual carriageway and back to Chandler's BMW 
But by doing that, we we're going to cover a huge amount of road types. And, um, you know, we can really talk through the bike as we go, try out different features on it. But yeah, already, I mean, this is such an easy bike to ride. Look at that. Beautiful. Right then guys, so I'm just going to change the cameras and change the equipment and then we'll do a bit of a walk around, go through the features and functions and we'll head out on a proper ride. Right then guys, here she is. It's a bit windy and the weather's very changeable so I'm going to do the very best I can. But this is the 2021 BMW GS 1250 and it's the 40th anniversary. It's the Adventure Edition and it looks absolutely stunning, absolutely gorgeous. I really, really like this paint style. You've got a few to choose from which we'll come on to, but let's start by having a look at the frame here. So we've got BMW's famous tubular design there, and the bike as a whole, it weighs around 268 kilograms, depending on a couple of options that you might try. Tank-wise, you've got a 30 litre tank in there as well, so you've got range for days. You should get well over 250 miles out of a tank. And yeah, absolutely beautiful to look at. Now, in here, suspension-wise, you've got BMW's Dynamic ESA, which we're going to go into some of the modes on the ride. But safe to say, combined with seven different riding modes, you're going to find something which fits you perfectly. And she's very, very smooth. Absolutely lovely. Brake-wise, guys, you've got BMW calipers at the front and 320mm vented discs at the front. And there's that Brembo brakes on the back. In here, guys, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's the twin radiator design suspension set up there with dynamic ESA. Engine wise, we'll come on to a lot of the stats a bit later on, but this has got BMW's horizontally opposed 1254cc boxer engine, and it produces an absolutely whopping 136 horsepower with a massive 144 newton meters of torque. A few cosmetic things on the outside. For 2021, you've got the brand new X-Design all LED headlamps on there, and these are the adaptive headlamps as well. So yeah, absolutely awesome. Integrated LED indicators, and they could be used in a cruise mode as well. But yeah, looks wise, absolutely awesome. Very, very sharp. Of course, each to their own, but I think she is beautiful. This one being the adventure spec, of course, you've got all of the frame guards on there and you've got your spot lamps on here as well. Oh, playing overhead. And because this is the 40th edition, we've got a few bit of detailing on there as well. So you've got this yellow and black finish on there, which goes back to the R100 GS, which I think's from 89. I'll do some cuts to it. But yeah, lovely. An option, 719 head gasket covers here as well. Of course, this is BMW shaft driven as well. So very, very smooth, which works really well with that boxer engine. Transmission wise, this is six speed, one down, five up, and it comes with the slipper clutch on there and quick shifter because this is the T variant. And to be fair, guys, in terms of the spec, and I'm gonna put some of it on the screen now, it's the one to go for, for the most part, you just get all of the toys and whistles that you want really. Pricing wise for this particular version, it's going to start from around 18 and a half. And by the time you add on your 40th pack and possibly heated seat options, you're looking at around 20 grand. Seating wise, it is very, very comfortable. And of course you've got a plethora of seating options available as well. So when you're building one of these, go and have a check out of those. Of course with this one, you get all your luggage prep on there as well. But here's, we've got your cruise control, lock switch, ESA change from road to dynamic, indicators horn, spotlights there as well, scroll wheel. Over here, this is where you've got your heated function for your grips and seat. Switchable rider modes, which you can store four on here, and you've got seven on the bike, which we'll have a look at in a sec as well. Of course, throttle. This one's got the optional SOS as well. Now, of course, we're not gonna use it, but it can't be retrofitted, so I think it's about 300 quid to add it on if you need it. In here, you've got lockable storage, which is pretty awesome. Got a charging point down here. And of course, this bike's got keyless ride, so push the button. There's that beautiful startup animation. For me, this is very much home from home because I've got an S1000XR, but you can just push down to go into your menu options, scroll along for the features that you want to go into. Let's go into my vehicle, have a quick look in here. 
scroll across, go onboard computer, trip, tire pressure monitoring, and your service screen. If we come back out of that, go into the settings, this is where you can really make the bike your own. So if we just go into that quickly, tire pressure, use this just to scroll up or down. There's your lights, go into that. Daytime running lights, those are just here. Right, so for this mode here, for the driving mode, here is your driving mode pre-selection. Let's go into this, because you've now got seven. So we've got Eco, Rain, Road, Dynamic, Dynamic Pro, Enduro, and Enduro Pro. And to change them, all you need to do, let's just pick one that we want. Let's deselect Dynamic. Let's put in Dynamic Pro. Let's get rid of Road and put in Eco. And what we can do then, by using this mode selector here, if you look in the top right there, if we just change that, there's your Rain, Dynamic Pro, we just put in there, Enduro, and there's your Eco mode. Easy as that. Of course, from here, this is where you can pay your telephone, go into it, you've got your media for music as well, and your turn-by-turn -turn navigation. So obviously you can get the BMW Motorrad app, and if you pair that to it, have your destinations in there, get turn-by-turn. -turn. Of course, with this one being the T, you've got the prep as well, so you can get, I believe, the Navi 6 unit, which can go in there, nice big screen entirely up to you to be fair on that front whether you want turn by turn or a full system if you're going to do some serious touring of course that full system is really nice to have all right then guys there's your quick tour over hope you enjoyed that bit let's go out for a proper ride then we're probably going to get a mixture of riding conditions i'd imagine so that's going to be pretty cool we'll go through the modes as well talk about how it feels and uh yeah let's get on it little things first six foot four guy super easy to get on but of course, you've got changeable height options on here as well. And you can even adjust the preload on this bike. So you'll be able to find something to suit you. No issues. And when you first get on it as well, all the weight is down low with this engine. So it's a lot more easier to manage than you might think. And there's that start up. Boom. Yeah, it's just starting to rain now, guys, but hey, of all the bikes to be doing this on, I think we're all right. <laughs> I think we're all right. You've got bags of torque low down, so maneuverability, yeah, super, super easy. <whistles> Suspension is really plush, actually, with my weight on it, and I am a big fella, I know. But yeah, really smooth. So in eco mode, if you can see in that top right corner there, that's where you've got that eco bar, much like you get in a car. So it's going to help you extend the range of the bike. Bit of fun for those longer rides as well. You can try and play the game of keeping it high. But I'm going to get out of that pretty quickly. So here's the mode. Change that there. Dynamic Pro. That's what we use for now. Right, so immediately I can tell you that's really stiffened things up. So the dynamic ESA suspension, that's really tightened up now. It's still plush, don't get me wrong, still very comfortable, but very different. So if you're going to have a bit of dynamic driving, riding, definitely put it into that mode. Something you can do as well, which you might not know, there's nothing behind me, so I'm just going to show you. Now, we've switched the mode here, and there's your dynamic riding mode. So that's engine characteristics, not just suspension. Over here, this is our dynamic ESA switch as well. So we can change it to road and dynamic. So if you want the, the characteristics engine-wise of a bit more sporty, obviously that works with the quick shifter and box as well, you can have dynamic up here, but you could have road mode for your suspension. Just going to put that back into dynamic for now, because that is what I want. Right, and we're off! So, yeah, I had to talk it in, didn't I? The minute we're getting to the right section, the rain comes. <laughs> but that's okay, that's alright. 
gonna put my heater grips on and there we are beautiful Now if any of you have experienced BMW heater grips as well, certainly the recent generation, if you put it on the full power ones, chances are it will melt your hands within a few minutes, they're that good. So a bit of joking there, but yeah of course they are really, really handy, really good to have. You know they're on, put it that way. Right, so I did ride this for a little bit earlier before stopping and I was using mainly the road mode. Now, in Dynamic Pro, which is probably what I would have this in most of the time to be fair, yeah, it really tightens things up in a nice way. It's not uncomfortable, it's not super sport of course, but it is very, very comfortable, very sharp. And of course, these lovely wide bars here as well, so counter steering is, you know, what you're going to be doing the majority of the time. And it's very, very easy, very, very easy. Because of the way the engine's laid out, obviously horizontally opposed boxer, all that weight is down low. Now, of course, you'd never want to drop one of these. Even I'd struggle picking it up, probably. But I don't think it's something you need to be worried about. I mean, I was a little bit concerned because the bike weighs like two, six, eight kilograms, right? And that's fully fueled. So I was a bit concerned that maybe it's going to be a bit unwieldy, a bit difficult to manage, but actually no, it's not at all, honestly, not at all. But so far then, what I would say in terms of the engine then, yeah, you've got tons of power low down, so very, very different to my bike, S1000XR, which is quite buzzy. All of the power from that is between kind of six and 10,000 power from this yeah you can get it from as low as 2000 it will pull really hard pretty much all the way to the top of the rev range but your red line here is going to be at 9000 okay so it's obviously not a super buzzy bike but don't be fooled because the GSA a lot of people say it's the bike that can do it all and it really can you know it can carve through the corners with ease people use these for track days in fact I'm pretty sure <laughs> my first track day and of course I was a noob super noob I'm pretty sure I got overtaken by a GS. So they're very, very good handling wise. You've got huge power to get out of corners, whether on track or road. Super, super comfortable. And at the top end, you know, you're going to be getting into the silly figures with ease. And I do mean with ease. Huge torque. You'll just fly through the gears on this bike. Now I mentioned this is the TE. So of course, to get all your heated grips on there, you get your luggage prep on there. Uh, you get the spot lamps on there as well, cruise control, uh, full dynamic ESA with control over all of the modes and different parts of it. Keyless entry, keyless ride. And the 40th edition, of course, you get a few of the cosmetic bits on there as well. The beautiful wheels on there, the spoked wheels. We're going to take a left here through Poinings. Now, of course, colour wise, You've got the normal grey on there as well. You've got your rally spec, which is beautiful. And you've got your triple black as well. And you would have seen these pop up on screen at this point, just so you can have a look at them. Now, China's have got a triple black uh, GS, so we might even do a separate review on one of those if you guys want to. So if you do, just let me know in the comments section. But yeah, you can definitely kind of make it your own. And you've got an absolute ton of options that you can put into these to really customise it. A lot of options, 719 parts as well. But... If it were me, I would probably say the pick is, with BMWs, it's always really, it's to get the TE variant, isn't it? So you get nearly all of the toys on there. Um, of course, you get your prep for your navigation on this one as well with TE spec. So yeah, you're looking at 18 and a half to get going. And then by the time you add on your 40 of spec, plus maybe a few other little options on there as well, you're looking at probably 20 grand, but... Ben's fantastic at getting a deal for everybody so contact details for Ben are in the description um, if you're in the market for one of these you know they're a destination dealer won loads of awards give him a call drop Ben an email and um, you know he'll do you proud don't worry he'll do you proud
Now, of course, the bike's super capable uh, across a variety of terrains. We won't be doing off-road for, for obvious reasons. One, because I'm not even a novice when it comes to off-road, so I can't say I've got experience there. And two, we'd, we've got the road tyres on anyway, so yeah, it's just never going to happen. But I guess, you know, these type of roads here is where this bike's super happy. And you've got to go slow through here, guys, because the minute you speed up, you've got horses, dogs, tractors, all sorts going through here. But I really like this route because it's a mixture of roads. Um, when times are normal as well, you've got some nice pubs here as well. Not that I'm plugging them, just saying, if you like your food as I do but yeah if we take this route we get a mixture of roads mixture of conditions for sure all kinds of stuff all over the roads but this is where the bike is super happy now just round this corner oh these grips I've got to turn them down again let's just turn them off so just down here then you've got a uh, national speed limit now I'm not going to go crazy of course but I want to show you a bit of the pulling power so we're at 3000 rpm just going to open up a little bit you know blink of an eye there's another 20 miles an hour and I promise you I've barely used any throttle isn't this nice lovely jubblies but yeah no, bags of torque you know very very well behaved this engine very very smooth characteristic of it yeah you know you get that kind of box of rock a tiny bit to it but it's very very smooth don't be put off by it um, you know a lot of these adventure bikes the big ones they've all got a bit of a rumble to them they've all got a bit of character but don't get me wrong they are very very smooth I remember this corner I always take it slow around here <laughs> mate of mine came off so um, yeah learnt lessons there but yeah in this type of environment you know the towns the countrysides this bike is super at home for obvious reasons very very capable very very comfortable and don't forget we've put this into the dynamic pro mode as well so dynamic suspension so that's in its harder setting as well in fact should we change that back there's your mode button enduro no so there's your road suspension yeah yeah okay so immediately that's yeah that's really lovely very plush in fact magic carpet type feel really really nice take it slow past the bikes but yeah open up a little bit it is national speed limit down here but yeah just effortless guys really really smooth got a nice soundtrack to it as well now the engine of course you know we mentioned 136 horsepower 144 newton meters of torque bags of power very usable across the whole rev range although you're going to be peaking out around six and a half for the most part and you don't need a lot more than that not with this bike because if you're using it under full throttle through the gears you know you'll be in Gibraltar before you know it very powerful um, but yeah it's Euro 5 compliant of course so everyone's got to go down that route there's no escaping it they've still got a nice sound out of the exhaust although you can get full aqua systems for it slip-ons and if you want that kind of extra bark to it that's where it's going to be found um, it doesn't make a massive difference these days because there's a lot of electronic valves in the exhaust system but it does give it a bit more of a rumble do you need it for this kind of bike I don't know I mean aesthetically yeah they look lovely um, you do get a bit of an extra rumble I wouldn't say it's gonna really do a huge amount for it um, you might get a tiny bit of extra power but for the most part no I don't think you need it just to point out there we took that down to 2000 and it was still just happy in that you know very very easy to use third gear lovely see look this is nice now the weather might be clearing a tiny bit I did say we'd get a mixture. <laughs> Lovely though. So nice to get out in the countrysides.
Right, so engine we've kind of spoken about, suspension we've touched on as well, you've got a ton of modes there. Off-road, I can't really comment, but you know, let's be honest, this bike is renowned for being incredibly good, so I think, you know, I'm not going to try and add to anything there. Very, very good. Riding modes for the engine characteristics as well, you've got seven to choose from. Dynamic ESA, you can change the suspension there. Plenty of adjustment in the seat height, features and functions. Now, let's go on to some of the electronics then on this bike because you've got a whole host of them. You've got a six axis IMU, uh, and let's just rattle them off because you've heard it all before, but you've got cornering ABS, traction control, proper ABS, enduro mode, you can adjust that. So obviously the rear wheel can do whatever you want. Um, but yeah, a whole host of systems there. The cruise control, of course, as well, that's really awesome. And you've got the app connectivity and turn-by-turn -turn navigation on this bike. So, yeah, features and functions-wise, you've got the whole load, really. Keyless ride, I think a lot of bikes are having them now. It's just more of a security thing than anything else. But don't forget to keep your keys, because if you leave them on the inside or you put them in your cubby hole and walk away, yep, someone could just start up your bike and off the trot. Now, you do get a data tool tracker on this bike. Um, you might want to check at the time of your purchase. Um, but I think you get like the stealth version and you get a year's license included with it. So peace of mind there as well. And of course you can get an app for that. So between the Motorrad BMW one and your data tool tracker, you can track your bike, you can track your journeys, track your mileage. Um, it does average speeds and all the rest of it, but you know, helpful to have really. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah, it's just effortless. That's super easy. Right, so we've covered the electronics then. We've gone through the engine and a few other toys on there. That system then, as I say, I've done a full deep dive on my XR, which is very similar. Um, if you want a full deep dive on this one, let me know and I'll see what I can work out. It won't be a problem. But yeah, system-wise, guys, these are one of the best. They're very, very responsive. Um, clear to see, you've got day and night modes as well. Yeah, customizable. It's really, really good. Gearbox is super smooth. That slipper clutch, yeah, beautiful. Does the job perfectly. Might just be a, a little bit about the, um, the modes that I've got it set up in. But I felt like the quick shifter was a tiny bit hesitant, but then again, I'm not using much throttle here guys and you've got to use the throttle and it is obviously wet weather so we're not about you know booting it today whatsoever but yeah it all works really well Look, a bit of throttle there she is straight up and down throttle closed yeah nice and easy no issues no weird crunching or anything like that but yeah aesthetically I know it's kind of each to their own I do like the 40th, it's really nice, I appreciate it's loud, and obviously you've got gold bars as well. But, I guess there might be an element in the next, you know, let's say 10 years, when you can't get these bikes anymore, not new anyway, there might be a bit of a collector's edition bonus that goes with it. I've got no doubt that a lot of cars and bikes are going to appreciate in the next 10 years, massively. But this might be one of them. You know, this could be one of your last adventure bikes that you want to keep and look after and cherish. So, you know, this or the triple black, lovely. Of course, the rally spec is beautiful as well, let's be honest. But yeah, very, very good looking bike. So across, you know, the town and country roads, you know, the 40s and 50s, yeah, very well behaved, very smooth engine, lots of power. Very nimble for a big bike. Um, of course, it's not super bikes or anything like that, but for a big bike, it's actually a lot more nimble than I thought. Get really great protection from the screen. I would have it in a higher position. For this kind of bike, I might even stick a little spoiler on the top as well, but of course, you've got a ton of options for those. But I'm not getting buffeted by the wind. It's a great riding position as well, so it's very commanding. Of course, your visibility is exceptional. Very comfortable. The seat's great. Um, you've got absolutely zero pressure on your wrist or anything. Lovely wide bars. Yeah. For those roads, very, very good. 
we're going to go on to a bit of dual carriageway in a minute but let's be honest it's not going to be disappointing on there i can't say that all of a sudden oh no we've got a problem so yeah very very impressive i guess it would only be fair to mention some of its competitors as well so ones that people are always going to talk about are going to be ktm uh, so like super adventure maybe the r to be fair against this one um, I did a review on the S last weekend, um, so if you want to have a look at that one, that explains a lot of the features. Ducati Multistrada as well. Um, I guess it depends, maybe the V4S, I guess. Um, so they're all fairly similar. I think the KTM overall would come out a couple of grand cheaper, even with toys. But then again, they're all very different, you know, when you go and buy a car, you don't necessarily go for the cheapest one, you're going to go for the one that you like. What I'm going to do, here's the cruise control, so I flip the switch across, push that button, and there she is, cruise control on. So yeah, for longer rides, that's going to be super handy. Very nice, very comfortable. And yeah, at speed, although you're going to hear a lot more wind, I'm actually not being buffeted very much. It's a good place to be. The seat's very comfortable. I put those heated grips back on and they're working wonders as well. Yeah, absolutely spot on. So yeah, if you guys can hear me, <laughs> it is windy today. It's very comfortable, very comfortable as you would imagine. Just cruises along, long journeys, no drama. Taking the long way around, no problem whatsoever. And yeah, across a multitude of different surfaces, speeds, terrain yeah absolute winner a lot of it's going to come down to your personal choice guys what do you like the look of more what do you like the feel of more and the wonderful thing is if you're in that position go and test ride them the best thing you can do in my opinion guys if you can do it in a weekend try and line up a couple of test rides almost one after another because that way you can get that back-to-back -back feeling, jump on them, see which ones you like the feel of. And without a doubt, you know, one of the bikes will talk to you. You'll know which one you like, especially if you're looking back at it and grinning. <laughs> if you're looking back and grinning at the bike, yes, <laughs> you've already fallen for it. So yeah, just to summarise again then guys, across a multitude of roads, speeds, terrain, the bike's an absolute belter. Incredible machine, very well proven excellent reliability records you know it's their own on the looks of course because it's always going to be subjective but i think the bike looks beautiful you've got a lovely range of colors and styles to choose from as well hey chap and because i ride a similar type bike myself it was like home from home for me i really like the system i love the controls you know if you've never ridden a bmw before i promise you you'll get on one of these not necessarily a gs but a bike like this and it's just so easy to get on with very very easy very responsive great handling superb power and real character with the boxer engine as well real character and before we finish guys i just want to say a massive thank you to ben and will and all the team to be fair at chandler's bmw they've recently updated their showroom and it looks absolutely incredible you've got a bmw heritage lounge you've got a huge area covering all of the different types of motorcycles it looks absolutely awesome They've also got a BMW clothing and accessories area combined with BMW parts department as well, so they can get you anything that you need in terms of motor ad. So thanks again, guys. Looks absolutely awesome and can't wait to do another video with you guys very soon. Right, guys, that pretty much brings us to the end of the review. I hope you liked it. Um, I hope I've covered enough for you as well. But any burning questions, let me know in the comments section and I'll be sure to answer you. You know how I work. And... Um, if you like the video, don't be shy. Give it a thumbs up because that really helps me with all the YouTube-y type stuff. But I can only say thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you on the next one.